SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. My name is Jim Fujimoto. I'm on the faculty of MIT. Uh, we're in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science in the Research Laboratory of Electronics. Uh, my group actually is involved both in femtosecond lasers as well as in biomedical optics. Uh, and in particular, uh, we're uh, involved in optical coherence tomography, uh, which is a method for uh, biomedical imaging. The interesting thing about OCT is that it's a very general uh, technology. Uh, essentially, it's a way that you can measure both cross-sectional images as well as three-dimensional structures inside both materials and uh, bio biological specimens. So it has quite a wide range of applications going from fundamental science uh, to uh, clinical applications. OCT, or optical coherence tomography, was uh, actually developed as a result of our work in femtosecond optics. We were interested in femtosecond optical ranging, that is the idea to use light pulses and measure echo time delays of light uh, to look at structures. And actually OCT was invented by uh, a medical student, uh, David Huang, who is an MD-PhD student in our group. And he had the idea to generate uh, cross-sectional images by using uh, uh, low coherence uh, interferometry methods. The dominant application is in uh, ophthalmology and uh, it's now a, a standard of care. So I think that if you go into pretty much uh, any ophthalmologist, um, in this, in especially the specialist ophthalmologist, glaucoma or retinal specialist, uh, the, the uh, OCT, uh, OCT diagnostics are, are now uh, a standard. Um, and if we look at other areas, uh, one of the big areas uh, that's emerging now is intravascular imaging, that is fiber optic imaging of the coronary arteries. Um, and one of the interesting things about um, uh, cardiovascular medicine is that um, you can use OCT to uh, assess uh, so-called unstable plaques, which are prone to rupture uh, and cause uh, myocardial infarction or heart attack. You can also use it to assess the placement of stents. Uh, stents are wireframe devices that are uh, inserted into the coronary arteries uh, to, uh, to treat blockages. So this is an emerging application of uh, OCT. I think we'll start to see uh, these applications uh, coming to the clinic in the future. If we think about optics in general in, in biomedicine, uh, there are generally two, what people would say, two, two kinds of applications. Therapeutics, that is applications for, for lasers for treatment, um, surgery, uh, corneal surgery, for example, uh, to correct vision is now uh, going over to very short pulse laser uh, methods. Um, so uh, surgical uh, applications, photodynamic therapy applications, uh, all would fall in the area of uh, therapeutics. Uh, and historically, this was the area of uh, biomedical optics that developed first, uh, if we go back 20 or 30 years. And then the other major area, which actually is the area that, that we're focused in, uh, is uh, diagnostics. So methods for imaging, uh, microscopy, um, techniques uh, of so-called optical biopsy or spectroscopic diagnostics. And I think at this point, this is one of the larger uh, areas. Uh, there are many groups, uh, both in the States as well as internationally, working in, in biomedical optics as a whole. Um, in the uh, BIOS conference at uh, Photonics West, we have over 1,000 uh, papers that are submitted in, in biomedical optics. In our case, we've been very fortunate to have uh, MD-PhD students who have both a strong clinical background as well as an engineering background. Um, one point that I think is important uh, just to mention is that I think uh, biomedical applications are extremely good training uh, for, for, for students because in addition to having training in optical engineering and in fundamental aspects of engineering, uh, you also have exposure to real world uh, clinical problems, uh, to uh, patient contact, um, issues of um, safety, efficacy in the clinic, all of these things are extremely important. Um, so there's a concept of vertical integration that we like to stress, uh, and I think many groups are, are also uh, emphasizing the idea that you can take a fundamental technology from, from basic studies to engineer uh, systems, and then to put these systems into the clinical environment where we're actually able uh, to, to do studies with uh, patients and with uh, physicians. If 
I look at all of the things that we've done here, I would have to say um, being able to work with excellent collaborators and training um, uh, students who, who go on to become independent researchers, that's the most satisfying.